Hi, welcome to another sketch and card tutorial. Today we will be building the scene. We will start with this coffee mug and the cracked coffee plate. Then we will build a teaspoon, two chocolate chip cookies, and the coffee table that everything is sitting on. But before we start, if you'd like to see more tutorials on how to use Sketch and Carve, make sure to subscribe. So let's start. Add a blank object and draw the profile of the coffee mug. Press K to activate Sketch and Carve. Expand the menu panel, add spin, change the axis to Z, and turn off volume and loop. And let's add some thickness. Adjust the value to your liking and enable even spacing. Expand the spin menu and turn on bisect. Adjust the simplification if you like. Also, let's increase the spin steps to get a nice smooth surface. Press K and reset the settings. Press numpad 0 to switch to camera view. Draw the mug handle profile. If needed, switch to grease pencil sculpt mode and massage the lines to your liking. Switch back to object view and press K. Enable blob and tweak the settings until you get a nice smooth handle. Also blob works best with even spacing on, so make sure to have it on as well. Let's reset the settings again and add a bevel to the base object. Adjust the bevel width value until the rim of the mug is nice and round. Let's add a plane object to act as our tabletop. Place it below the mug and adjust its scale. Add a new blank object and name it Spill. Align the canvas to top view by pressing Alt 7. Shift right click on the tabletop to make the canvas flush with the surface. Draw the spill shape and press K. Enable blob, switch to front only and adjust the height. Also reduce the extrusion to something very low. Increase the shade smoothing angle if necessary. If you'd like to add to the spill shape, you can mute it anytime and uh, draw extra shapes. If you need them blended together, turn on Merge. This will combine all overlapping shapes into one. Keep tweaking the settings until you're happy with them. Generally, when using Blob, it's a good idea to enable even spacing. Now, unless Sketch and Carve's random colors is a perfect match, select the spill object and adjust its material to something that resembles coffee. Select the mug itself and press K. Reset the settings and center the canvas at the world center. Using the rectangle tool, draw a shape that encompasses the bottom half of the mug. Activate self trim and press K to finalize the shape. In object mode, select the newly created object. Place the 3D cursor somewhere outside the mug. Then press Shift Alt right click to separate the outside section. Deselect all, then select the outside section again and press delete. And what is left behind is the coffee inside the mug. Assign the same coffee material to the new object. Select the mug again and press K. Place the 3D cursor on one of the faces and align the canvas to that face. Draw another spill shape. If needed, reduce the simplification for more detail. Adjust the extrusion like so and select Inset 3D. Switch to Outset and activate Separate. Adjust the inset value to give it some thickness. In object mode, select a new spill object Press K to activate Sketch and Carve and give it some subdivisions. Assign the same coffee material to it as well. Activate Sketch and Carve again and create a new blank object. Name it Plate. Make sure the 3D cursor is at the world center. Press Alt 1 for the front view and draw the plate profile. Switch to Scope mode and adjust the lines if needed. Back in draw mode, activate sketch and carve and turn on spin. Choose the z-axis and select cap. Increase the spin steps to something like 32. Select the plate, isolate it and place the 3D cursor at its center. Turn on blob and select base. Set the height to zero. Adjust the row spacing if you like, but uh, in this case, I think the default value is just right. Disable assign material as we don't need it here. Do the same with the bottom face as well. Turn on subdivision and enable crease. Adjust the crease value to your liking. Check to make sure that the objects are not penetrating each other. If need be, adjust their positioning. Next, we will do the same thing as we did with the coffee mug. Select the plate and using the rectangle tool, draw a box around it just like before. Increase the extrusion and its positioning until top part of the box is showing inside the plate. 
turn on self trim and press K to set it. And like before, we will delete the excess part of the box. And in order to do that, make sure to deselect everything first and then select the correct part to delete. And also, just like before, assign the coffee material to the remaining part. Alt right click and position the cursor to world center. Next, add another blank object and name it Cookie. Press numpad 0 to switch the camera view and draw the cookie profile. Press K. Enable blob and select front only. Adjust row spacing and the iterations until you get the shape you like. Reduce the extrusion to something very small. Let's do the same as we did with the plate. Place the 3D cursor on the backside of the cookie. Press K and with the blob still active, select base and set the height to zero. Press K and reset the settings. Enable sub D and turn on base. Press K again to set it. Now let's hide all the other mesh objects in the scene. You could use isolate, but unfortunately you won't be able to see the grease pencil lines then. Draw a stroke like this, press K and turn on camera projection. Switch to mesh mode and select rock. Change the size to something small as they will be the chocolate chips on our cookie. Activate Curve Deform and turn on Scatter. Play with the scatter amount and the number of copies until it looks right. When done, press K to set it. Select the cookie and switch to Sculpt Mode. Add a few bumps and creases since chocolate chip cookies tend to be pretty rough looking. When done sculpting, switch back to object mode and adjust the chocolate and the cookie materials so it looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Unhide all the other objects. Select the cookie and set its origin to its center. Adjust the scale until it looks right next to the mug. Since we are doing this now, let's adjust the materials for all the rest of the objects so the set looks a little less wacky. Select all the objects and hide them. Put the 3D cursor to world center. Press K and start a new blank object. Name it Spoon. Draw one half of the spoon profile. We will mirror the other half. In sculpt mode, tweak and smooth the lines. In object mode, press K. Reduce the simplification if you like and turn on even spacing. Set the extrusion to zero. We don't want any thickness just yet. Turn on mirror and select new. Expand the mirror options and turn on bisect, and flip also if needed. Expand the mirror profile transform and slide the shape in X a bit. Reset the settings just in case. Turn on faces tab and select dissolve limited. Choose base and set the angle to something very small. We only want to get rid of the internal edges. Turn off dissolve, switch the camera view and select the line tool. Draw a line across the neck of the spoon and turn on knife. Reset the settings and place the 3D cursor on the spoon. Enable Blob and select Base. Choose Front Only. Adjust the height in positive or negative to create that nice round spoon shape. Turn off Contours to maintain the profile. Also turn off Assign Material. Adjust the height some more if needed. Next, turn on Thickness and select Base. Adjust the thickness value to your liking. Reset the settings again and turn on Smart Join. Switch to Camera View. Press Alt right click and set the 3D cursor to World Center. Next, draw the handle profile. Press K and turn on spin. Select Z axis. Let's also turn on even spacing. Switch to user perspective or press auto view. Turn on cap to make sure the top and bottom is closed. Expand the options and turn on bisect. If necessary, use the profile transform for a tighter fit. Reduce the simplification for more resolution. You can also use main transform to tweak the placement of the handle. Optionally turn on self trim. This will carve out the metal part of the spoon from the handle. If you're happy with the shape, press K to set it. In object mode, select the mesh objects and tweak their materials. Select the handle again and press K. Switch the camera view and using the rectangle tool, draw a little box right below the handle. 
Reset the settings if necessary. Switch the boolean mode to remove and turn on cut through. If you need to adjust the cut placement, use the main transform to slide the cut up and down. Now let's unhide all the objects in the scene so we can position them relative to each other. Let's start with the cookie. Select it and roughly orient and position it near the cup. Let's do the same with the spoon. Select it and rotate and translate it into a natural looking pose in the cup. Now for the fun part. Select the cup, the plate and the tabletop object and press K. Press the sketch and simulate button. Select sketch and simulate and press passive to make the selected objects passive objects. Next, select the cookie and follow the same steps, except this time make it an active object. Press OK and close all the panels and run the simulation. Go to the frame where you would like to freeze the animation. Select the cookie and activate Sketch and Simulate, which you can also find under Object Menu. Choose Apply Rigid Body and press OK to close all the windows. This should freeze the cookie's pose at the frame you have selected. Next, let's work on the mug handle, which came out a bit droopy the first time around. Switch the camera view and draw a shape that covers the entire handle. Adjust the extrusion until the entire handle is enclosed. Turn on Cage and activate Remesh. Simplify the shape and when done, click the bind button next to cage. Select the new cage object and switch to edit mode. Modify the shape until you're happy with it. When done, switch back to object mode and hide the cage. Now let's decorate the mug a bit. Select the mug and press K. Draw some shapes that we will use as a motif. Press K and activate Array. Adjust the X offset and increase the copies. Next, activate Curve Deform. Choose Circle as the curve. Adjust the radius for a tight fit. Then adjust the extrusion until the new shape intersects the cup nicely. Enable Inset 3D. Select Outset and Separate. Adjust the inset value. If needed, use Main Transform to reposition the pattern. Tweak the settings until you're happy, and when you're done, press K. Next, we will add a crack to the plate. Select it and Shift D to duplicate it. Hide the copy. Select the original plate and press K. Press Alt 7 to go to top view. From the presets drop down, select Crack. Draw the first crack. If you prefer, play with the noise settings. For more definition, turn on even spacing. Also, reduce the thickness to something very small. When done, press K to set it. Draw a second crack intersecting with the first one. Place the 3D cursor on the small crack piece. Press Shift, Control, right click to separate it. Select a new piece, rename it if you like, and hide it. Since we never froze the handle cage, you can always go back and tweak it some more. Or adjust its shape key value for a happy medium. And now let's build a table. Select and hide the plane. Press K, start a new blank object and name it Table. Draw the profile of the table contours. Press K and activate Spin. Choose Z axis. Select Cap to close top and bottom. Increase the spin steps for a smoother edge. Next, let's draw the first leg. I'll be using the sketch style, so it's okay to use multiple strokes. Just make sure that they are enclosed. If there are some gaps left, you can go into Edit and move some vertices around to make them overlap with each other. If needed, switch to Sculpt mode and smooth the lines a bit. Switch back to Draw mode and press K. Spin is still active, so let's reset the settings. Turn on Symmetry to center the leg and adjust the extrusion. Also enable Blob and adjust the settings until you get a nice round leg. To create the remaining legs, turn on Array. Since we want a circular array, Set the X offset to 0 and enter 90 for Z rotation. Set the number of copies to 4. Switch the camera view and reset the settings. Using the rectangle tool, draw a little box on one of the legs. Again, turn on spin and choose Z axis. Also increase the spin steps like before.
Again, switch the camera view. With the current settings still active, select the circle tool. Draw a small circle on one of the legs and press K. This will repeat the same action and you should end up with a ring. The odds are the top of the table is not quite aligned with the mug. So select the table and move it up or down a bit until the top is flush with the coffee spill. Next select the table, press K and reset the settings. Draw a rectangle box like so and press K again. Select remove and cut through. This will make the bases of the feet flat. And finally, let's change the material colors to something more agreeable than the random colors. Select each material and change it to your liking. Select the table and place the 3D cursor on the base support. Press K and reset the settings. Activate the loose button and turn on bevel. Choose bevel base and adjust the settings. Next, let's add a few more extra touches. Select the cookie and duplicate it. With the copy still selected, press K. Switch the camera view and align the canvas roughly for a top view. Draw a shape that looks like a bite mark and press K. Switch to remove, but instead of using cut through, let's adjust the extrusion length manual. Increase the extrusion subdivisions and add some noise. When happy with the shape, press K to set it. Switch to object mode and select the cookie. Rotate it somewhat so that it won't look like the first one. Just like before, select the table, activate sketch and simulate and make it a passive object. Do the same with the new cookie except make it an active object and run the simulation. At the frame you like, apply the rigid body to freeze the pose. And last, let's add a few more drops of coffee on the table. Select the spill, press K and align the canvas to the top view. Draw a few more coffee drops. Press K and reduce the extrusion. Activate blob and switch the front only. Adjust the values similar to the first time around and press K to set it. Assign the same coffee material to the new droplets and we are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, maybe even picked up a few tips and tricks on how to use Sketch and Carve. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please make sure to subscribe, like and ring that bell icon. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.